Hi everyone and welcome along to another edition of the Celtic Views Cult Hero Series where we sit down with some of the biggest and best cult heroes in the history of the football club and we talk all things Celtic and go through some of their favourite memories and we're joined by one man who certainly wrote his name into the history books at Celtic with that night against Partizan Belgrade amongst many others he's a 62 time capped Polish internationalist played for Legia Warsaw in his homeland and of course came to Celtic where he made himself a favourite amongst Parkhead supporters. It is none other than Darius or as he's known Jackie Jackanowski. Jackie how are we? Good, hello, how are you? I'm very good thank you, yeah very good, very pleased to to get you on. How's things? Where are you just now? Are you still living in Poland? Yes I live in, uh, I live in Warsaw, I'm uh, it is my hometown. Uh, I work in here. I just, I think I will stay in here to the end of my life. <laughs> yeah, but well, I'm really looking forward yeah. to to getting into some of your uh, your favourite memories about being at Celtic. It must bring back so many memories for you when you talk about your time at Celtic. Yes, uh, it was a great time for me. It is my first first trip uh, to play the to in the West Europe. And it was very excitement for me, and uh, and uh, I have very good memory about the Celtic. Yeah, I can't wait to get into it. Well, what we'll do first of all, though, Jackie, is we'll start off at your very early days of when you were growing up and playing football. Just talk us through what life was like for you growing up in Warsaw in your early days when you were trying to play football. Yes, uh, I. I, I I stay in I live in uh, in flat where it was uh, where it was uh, where 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 they living uh, my big family my three uncles and they were they play in football and sometimes they took me to outside the, our flat just for we kicking the ball and and uh, from beginning was for me uh, but a more excitement moment uh, if I stay in the flat just just looking through the window and and looking how play uh, all their all their uh, all their uh, friends and and for me always was excitement and and if you ask me if you uh, if somebody asked me in this time uh, Darek what you want to do I I always answered I want to play football if we go to holiday somewhere uh, if, if, for example we're driving 350 kilometers to on the sea. And when I saw it, the uh, football pitch, when we driving by motorway, I said, well, Dad, Mom, why we don't stay in, <laughs> in here? It's a fantastic place. It is football pitch. This is enough for me. <laughs> it is, uh, you know, it is from beginning. This is my choice. Well, my choice was uh, football. Yeah. But I, when I was young, I, 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 I dreamed about being a footballer. But I, uh, I didn't dream about I will be playing the big, I will be I will be playing the big clubs. Uh, just I want playing football. You know what I mean? Till I don't know, 16, 18 years old, you just want to play. You don't think about uh, moving to the clubs, but but to play, only to play. How big was football in Poland when you were growing up? Because Poland has such a history of bringing through some amazing world class players. So. Was it a big part of life in Poland for you? You know, in the 70s, when I was uh, 10 years old, and uh, our national team won the, won the Olympic uh, gold medal in Monachium in, in West Germany. And 74 was incredible because we, were, we, uh, we achieved uh, the third place in the in the in the World Cup during World Cup in Germany, and be, and before during qualification we we uh, we beat uh, England, <laughs> England, <laughs> and we promotion to the World Cup. But this was big surprise and was incredible. And the seventies, on the seventies was uh, we have fantastic team, fantastic player. They are were so great and we play very great football on on World Cup uh, uh, 78 as well in Argentina. 82, uh, we 
were fighting the war uh, in Spain. What was success, successful uh, time for football and everybody in Poland want to play football. Won't be uh, Dana, Żmuda, Lato, another big players, uh, Tomaszewski, everybody want to play um, like, uh, like they play, they play, they play, they play football. And uh, yeah, it just, just uh, was great time for football. And especially when you are under communists, it is, well, it is uh, this kind of country uh, only f make promotion for the very country through the sport. The sport was uh, quite important in this time for this uh, countries. You said that when you were, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said that when you were playing okay. football, you, you weren't sure you were going to, to make it as a sort of big star. What was the moment for you in your playing career where you thought you could make it as a professional? Um, hmm. I from the from the beginning I was always player with the older players. When I started playing the football, uh, I had uh, I was uh, ten years old. I played with the 14, 15, 15 uh, pl old players, uh, uh, old players, and from on the sixty uh, below sixty, I, I start playing with the second league. Uh, with uh, adult uh, league, you know, professional league. And from 16 till uh, 21, I play in Vardia Warsaw. It is second, was second club in Warsaw because uh, the, the biggest club in, on this time was in Warsaw and the same in Poland was Legia Warsaw. But in Legia Warsaw play only players who, who play for national team. But this was not possible for me. I play in the youth team, but uh, you, you, you only have chance when you play a few games for national team. Uh, first national team was so difficult. Until 21 years old, I, I, I moved to Wieserfuch. And and this time I had, when I was uh, uh, 21 years old, Wieserfuch, uh, um, uh, pay a lot of money for me. This was, uh, uh, it was shocked for the people it was 83. Uh, it was shocked to the supporters how much pay Visa Forge uh, to Legia War, uh, to Vartia Warsaw. And uh, in this moment, when I'm moving from my, uh, from, uh, from my family to the second town and to big club because Visa Forge was uh, this time quite successful in the Euro. They play uh, uh, and against uh, very big clubs and were successful. Bonnik play and this time and uh, Żmuda and Smolarek, uh, a few uh, big stars in Poland. And, uh, and this time I, I, I moved to, uh, to another club and was uh, a lot of pressure as well for me because I was 20 years old. Uh, uh, young players and I recognize, oh my God, I, 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 everybody wants to, from me uh, like a professional because in the Gwartia Warsaw don't have ambition to be the best player team in Poland, just to survive in the Premier League, wasn't any pressure. And when you when you move to the bigger club, everybody say, okay, club pay uh, for you a lot of money, show your, show your, um, show your, uh, uh, show your, uh, how you play. Yeah. And you then got a move to Legia Warsaw, didn't you, after that? And you were playing for the Poland national team. You played in the 1986 World Cup as well. So in that period in your career, did you really feel like you were a recognised striker in Europe where you were scoring lots of goals and challenging for titles? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I started playing for national team when I was 19 years old, uh, 81. And um, yeah, uh, when I start playing in the Europe uh, with Visa and uh, later with Legia Warsaw, uh, is uh, some of the clubs, big clubs, asking if I uh, if I want to go to West. But in this time in 80s, it was so difficult because you. Uh, you need permission from government and you need to uh, have more than 30 years old. If you have below, 
you cannot eat, you cannot go because you are too young and well, it's quite difficult. And and uh, if you if all some of the players from East Europe, if they want to go early, go to play in the big clubs in, on the West, just run away from the country and just may, maybe cannot play one year because UEFA um, UEFA disagree about playing because you are without permission the club and the country. Um, you 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 go to the West Europe. But after one year, you start playing uh, as playing this club. Uh, I have few few chance few offer to go to a big club, uh, but uh, um, uh, my club and the same uh, the same uh, federation disagree about this, and and I I cannot go because you know in the football. If you um, you have maybe two three chances, maybe one chance sometimes to go to big club and and uh, and uh, just uh, take the risk, okay, and uh, try to do be the best and just uh, just just start to play in the big club. Yeah, in 1989 is when you eventually joined Celtic, and at that time as well in Poland. There was a lot of change politically. Did that make it easier for you to move when Celtic eventually turned around and said they wanted to sign you? Yeah, it was for me it's a big surprise, uh, and Celtic was uh, want me to play uh, to play because uh, I know a lot uh, about the English football, but in the Scotland, okay, uh, Celtic Rangers is a big club, but um, but in Poland uh, more people. Uh, follow the English football. You know what I mean? We knew yeah. it is okay, Rangers, Celtic is a big club, but we don't go inside. We don't uh, just um, uh, just uh, uh, know more about this club. Uh, and before I have offered to, to for bigger money uh, to, for example, to buy Leverkusen, to Eintracht Frankfurt, Pescara, I was so close. Uh, and Inter Milan, because we, before we play two, two uh, European uh, matches, four European matches against Inter Milan. And I have offered from Inter as well, but uh, disagree. For more money, like $2 million, uh, it is wow. was a lot of money yeah. this time. And I was astonished because. Uh, 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 I remember when uh, when a club uh, 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 called me and just uh, one discussion about this transfer, and they told me uh, six hundred thousand uh, pounds. Uh, is as I said, it is uh, was one around nine hundred or one million uh, dollars. I said, why you do one year early? Didn't sell me for two million. Just now you're selling me for one million. I don't know. I still I don't know why. <laughs> but uh, but yes, it was uh, was for me. Uh, uh, Twenty seven years old. I was uh, was okay. I, I take a chance. Uh, they told me uh, because in this time, uh, agent uh, John Smith is from London. He was the he was the uh, manager. Uh, Pallister, you remember Manchester mm -hmm. United? Pallister. Yeah, Gary Pallister, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and the same Polish guy, uh, Roman Manuszewski, he was involved with uh, transfer. And, uh, and, just as a sorry. And uh, mm, they told me about the uh, situation. And um, Celtic was so disappointed about uh, the Maurice Johnson. You remember him? Yes, indeed, yes. He <laughs> was in for Nantes, I think, in yeah. France. And he was very close to sign contract, and and Celtic was desperately uh, by another striker. And, and why why I said why I said, why I said to you because he was so quick with transfer. Because Celtic won probably just uh, just uh, resolve this situation, just uh, because uh, uh, supporters are wasn't happy and uh, Celtic uh, 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 was in the rush to buy some uh, striker. 
mm-hmm. why I have no chance to, to sign contract for uh, Celtic. Yeah. The story goes that Billy McNeil watched you score two goals in the Polish Cup final in 1989, and that is what swayed him to sign you. Is there any truth in that at all? Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think so. He, he, he watching me probably with the video or something. Mm. Yeah. I think so uh, he watch uh, me on live uh, in, in uh, this final. Yes, it this was last my last game. We played final cup, uh, Polish cup, and we won five two, and I scored two goals. Yes, yes. Uh, he watching me. I scored two goals. But uh, later on, on the first. Uh, w- when I signed a contract, uh, uh, later I we moving for two weeks preparation and friendly games. And d- during first game, I play striker, and and my friend started to play me long ball and to the I, I was fighting in the on the air. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And uh, my friend uh, told me, "Is Billy McNeil say said to?" Uh, uh, Tom Craig, Craig, he was the assistant. He's uh, he asking him who bought it him because I couldn't couldn't um, the win any and and a ball who is in the air because my jump was <laughs> centimeter maybe two centimeter. He said who bought it? and and Tommy Tommy Craig uh, Craig uh, t- t- uh, answered him you bought it him oh my God what I done. <laughs> He's not uh, good for uh, Scottish football. He couldn't jump at all. <laughs> but start playing me uh, to the feet was uh, was uh, much better. Yeah, that's a welcome to Scottish football. Put the ball in the yes. air. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, what was Billy McNeil like to work with? I mean, he's such an influential person and figure in the history of Celtic Football Club. One of the most important people in the history of this club. What was he like as a manager? Was he a shouter and a raver? Was he quite calm? How did you get on with, with Billy McNeil? Uh, he was quite a positive person. He was the, everybody respected him very much because he's, he was the legend and he was a um, very strong personality as well. And uh, yes, uh, I working him. Uh, I I I working with him. I was really joyed to working with him. Uh, he was very. Um, sometimes if he was wasn't good, to happen on the pitch. He he just um, he just uh, starting to be angry and uh, uh, better you moving something behind the another players because you will get uh, something uh, what you will be regret later. <laughs> uh, um, he was. I really respect him, like the manager. Uh, he is. He is. He. He. He for me was a person very, um, very positive. I don't know how we describe more. Mm-hmm. And two years ago, when I heard he died, I, I was really, really, really sorry for this because uh, he was a really nice person and legend. Yeah, most definitely a legend. Um, so when you come into yeah. the door at Celtic, what were your first impressions of Glasgow and of the football club? Uh, first day was uh, for me uh, was the I was uh, uh, really surprised for me about the town, about the and about the stadium, uh, for example. And I remember my first day when I arrived with my managers, and we arrived. Uh, uh, about the midday, about one o'clock and lunchtime. And I remember we just watching the pitch, watching the stadium, and we went to the lunch room. And this time players uh, eat lunch. And they introduced me, I say hello, and try to shake hands with, her, with uh, uh, each player. And uh, after a few seconds, uh, players starting laughing. I don't know what, why, why, why are you laughing? And what's happened? Because in the was two row, a second row, you cannot go around because it's the wall. And I threw the table. I shake his hands through the table. And my tie was uh, <laughs> was uh, was was in the on the plate in the soup. <laughs> we started laughing. I said, Why are you laughing? Why? What's happened? And, and I, I, I have 
out uh, not really good, but uh, <laughs> it was okay. And uh, and first day, a uh, player said to me, I couldn't wearing the uh, the uh, suit, blue suit, only green suit. <laughs> and I bought it uh, uh, next day. I bought it uh, two two uh, suits green <laughs> and. and <laughs> And it wasn't true, you know. What I mean? But, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's, it's for me was a, a big, big surprise about uh, how big is uh, this club. And I remember yeah. my first game on the Celtic when we play against uh, Dynamo Moscow. It was my my was first game. And I remember we uh, 50 minutes uh, before the game, you always you going to warm up. And all players said would be full crowd. We will be. If, 45,000 supporters will be on. Okay, we, we went to, through the corridor and I see 50 minutes before the game is uh, only 1,000, 1,500, maybe something like that. I say, no, it's not true. For friendly games, we will come maybe 5,000, 6,000. Okay. After half an hour, 35 minutes, we're back to changing room. We change the clothes, we go to corridor and, and we go through, pass to the tunnel, it's the full crowd. It was incredible, it's the full crowd. But this is uh, incredible, how passion, how, you know, from the beginning is the, the big uh, shouting and the big, the big support. It's, it was great. It's, it's, I like it, this kind of situation. Yeah. And for me, it's, uh, it's not against me. I, I like it uh, if something happened or, or or uh, the best if uh, supporters is behind you, are shouting and give you the push. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. So when you when you signed for the club, we had just won the Scottish Cup, and the season before that we won the league and the Scottish Cup double as well. So when you were coming in, did you feel there was a lot of pressure on you as a striker to deliver for the football club and continue to win trophies? Uh, you know, uh, I have support from the older uh, uh, experienced players like Tommy Barnes, like uh, Paki Bonner, like Paul McStay, these very ex experienced uh, players. Uh, yeah, well, you know, it's always it is, uh, it is about the winning, about, uh, be above the Rangers. It is the first. First thing, what you need to recognize. Uh, uh, yeah, it is every game. It is, it is you must win. Doesn't matter if you play home or out away, uh, because most of the if you play away, it is more supporters from Celtic. Yes, always if you play home or away, and you 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 feel you you must give one hundred percent and try to win every game. And. Um, you know, yeah, it is. We have mix, mix because uh, sorry, I didn't say about, uh, for example, Roy Edki this time was the big, big uh, hero as well. Uh, we have uh, quite good, good team, I think, because uh, uh, together with me came uh, Paul Elliott, uh, John Hewitt, and Martin Hayes, I think. It is uh, for uh, Mike Galloway, Galloway from Hearts. And next year uh, come John Collins. And we have the, we have, we have the potential to, to, to be a strong team uh, and do winning. But opposite team, Rangers have incredible team as well. Because uh, in this time, uh, three quarter uh, uh, national team, it is, was, uh, uh, from England, it is, was uh, Chris Woods, uh, Gary Stevens, uh, Terry Butcher, Richard Goff, uh, Scottish national team, um, Mark Walters, uh, Ali McCoy, brother Mark Hatley. Hatley was incredible team was uh, again, and was and we were little little always behind, and we we, we just uh, uh, couldn't manage to be to be first, but. But you know, it is if, the, if you come to Celtic, you must be uh, you must be ready. Uh, is uh, 
it is not about you will be in the reserve or, or or you will be in the in the club you won't be you must give something special to the this club because this club have always ambition to be first in the scotland and the same uh, be good in the europe mm -hmm. you mentioned rangers that was your first league goal for celtic was against rangers what was that experience yeah. did you see it i've seen it yes yeah a little bit so fortunate. Lucky. <laughs> a little bit fortunate. <laughs> i didn't want to say but you brought it so up, lucky so, <laughs> <laughs> so lucky oh my goodness oh it counts you know it counts yeah, so. it counts yeah it's true <laughs> It's incredible uh, lucky because it, uh, I think after a few minutes, uh, Terry Butcher scored a goal. Yeah. It, uh, uh, after a few minutes, uh, I don't know, 25 or 30 minutes, uh, was corner kick and uh, Tommy Coyne uh, by Hedda uh, in, uh, hitting the post. And I stood uh, uh, five <laughs> meters from the, <laughs> from the line, from the post. They hit me by two knee. And well, I was score goal. I was so happy. <laughs> it was goal for me. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah I mean, great. it doesn't matter how they go in. Everybody remembers someone that scores <laughs> in a derby match like that. So that whole experience, yeah. did you felt a noise like that before playing in those derby games? Did you have similar experiences in Poland or was this very new? Uh, we, it just was, it just was special. Uh, Special atmosphere in this uh, in this derby because it's the half is the green, half is the, is the blue, and it's one uh, team. Well, if Celtic score goal, we, we supporters go crazy and five ten minutes. Another side stood like during the funeral and nobody moving, nobody smiling, just like <laughs> just stood and moving. And what's happened? What's happened? And after. Five, seven minutes by starting, come on, we, we can uh, beat it, Celtic, for example. It is, it is just incredible because, uh, uh, but the most important is atmosphere before the game. This one week starting be, starting be you feeling in the, on the street, on the shop, everywhere. Uh, if you're going to the shop, you see that this person is quite cold and moving very slowly to you, ask you not, what you would you like but if you don't like uh, it's no problem you move to another maybe shop but it's, it's great because he's uh, you feeling is coming to a very important game yes uh, and and uh, it's, it's it's incredible because in poland the you don't have this kind of uh, uh, divide and half half like in glasgow and in Poland, for example, in Warsaw, you don't have, maybe you have Polonia Warsaw, but it's not the same big club like Legia Warsaw. And we have uh, derby like uh, uh, Legia Warsaw against Lech Poznan. It is the two big clubs who, but two, if here in, in, in Scotland, you have uh, two clubs in the same town. It is just incredible, believe me. It's, it, is, it, is, it is great. It's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got off to a good start. You'd scored against Rangers. You'd scored a couple of other goals. But the big moment is a month later against Partizan Belgrade, that famous, famous night. However, what, before we get to that, what I want to do is actually talk about the first game because that game sort of goes unnoticed when we talk about the history of Celtic and the history of Partizan Belgrade. We went over to play, I think we ended up playing the game in Mostar, which is quite a bit further away from Belgrade in the first leg in torrential yeah. rain. What were your memories of that game? I think we lost the game 2-1, but we got an away goal, so you must have felt confident that we would get through in the second leg. Yeah, we, we was, uh, and this game was, uh, was uh, I think we will be satisfied if it will be draw, if it will be 1-1 one, one or 2-2. Two, two. Uh, and yes, uh, after this game, uh, we were uh, really optimistic about we were winning this game, and and uh, yeah, it is more, more, more uh, It was my first game, uh, European game uh, again in, in Celtic. Uh, we were sure we will beat uh, them and we go through, uh, but uh, but it was it was incredible because. Uh, 
uh, yeah, we, 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 we've been in Dubrovnik, nice place, most time we play. Uh, well, it was, you know, it is, it's, we don't feel it is like big game when we play in Mostar. We thought about we will uh, we will be uh, have if we go to next round we play we play a big match because uh, when I check it uh, when I check it uh, next game Partizan Belgrad I think play against Real Madrid I think next game and they beat Real Madrid one zero and they lost so four zero what what we will be fantastic game for uh, for us if we will go through the Partizan Belgrad. It, it is, was just crazy game, and end of the this game we didn't know we go through or we know did it, we if we win if we win uh, if we go to next uh, round or we don't go next round when we when we scored uh, fifth goal was five three. This time we play eleven against nine because two players from Partizan Belgrade. What stood be, uh, in front of the bench behind beside the line um, uh, line and just couldn't move him because they have cramp, they have problem with the injury, and we were so sure we scored another another goal. So I remember uh, was five against uh, five three, and I don't know if uh, Andy Walker uh, with me or Joe Miller with me. We went we uh, last minute we went to. Two against one against the goalkeeper, uh, and if Joe Miller or or, or Andy Walker, I don't remember. Uh, if pass me the ball, I go to I go to score to the empty net. You know, it will be six three. But this was incredible, and it was we just kicking the ball the the further to the our half, and just score goal. It just 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 was incredible. It just. Uh, it is maybe 100 years uh, in history. You just uh, you just uh, will be this uh, this uh, how we say uh, this dramatic uh, situation about because we uh, one zero down two one two two three two and f uh, it was just incredible. I think Peter in this time we go through because I think in this moment uh, was. Experienced players, new players, and for us would be good jump to the to the to the to the higher level. Because if you play in the Europe uh, after this game, you must doing something. Uh, you must achieve something. You must be more confident when you play in the league as well. It's uh, just incredible. Because I, I scored four goals. I, I I don't know. I couldn't uh, uh, smiling after this game. I couldn't. Uh, uh, cry, I couldn't uh, smile. Uh, I just, just, uh, uh, just you feel uh, so bad because you couldn't express yourself. You are happy, individual, but it is no point. It. it is no, no, no value for you mm. because you score goals, but, uh, but, uh, but you, 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 did, you, you didn't go through the uh, next round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. And I think for for anyone that's listening who maybe doesn't know about the game, this was it was the, the European Cup Winners Cup, the second leg at Celtic Park. We played Partizan Belgrade. We win the game five four, as you said, but we go out on away goals. You score four of the goals. I mean, what was it like just to, just to play in it when the goals hey, are one moment, back one moment. Forth? Yeah, I would like to say, uh, after, uh, ten years ago. Uh, no, 12 years ago, when I was a uh, national team coach under 18, I met one of the players who was the coach for Macedonia, and we played in the split, I think. Uh, we played in the split. And we met him. It was incredible, because we didn't, after many, many years, we didn't meet each other. We just say, hey, you play for this game, yes. And you know what we We hug each other. It was incredible. <laughs> Like the, like the brothers who just have a memory in the past. It was incredible. We're just like, oh my God, I don't mind. Oh, you play on the left back. Oh, yes, I play in the front. Yes, I remember. It was incredible. It's <laughs> incredible. Like you meet this person during 90 minutes or maybe 180 because first game as well. Uh, maybe after the game, you just you shake hands, nothing more. 
But after many years, you still, if you meet this kind of person, you say, oh, you've been in the biz game. That's incredible. Yeah. Okay. No, and, and did you know as well that the person that, that scored the winner or the, the fourth goal for Partizan Belgrade, Skepovic, his Jude son... Davis. Yeah, his son played for Celtic as well. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He signed for Celtic, maybe... He apologised for that? He says sorry <laughs> from that? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But yeah, it was quite quite a surreal moment for, for that to happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, just talk us through the, the emotions of the game because it's such an odd match to recall because you score four goals. It must be one of the your best performances, I imagine. But we don't go through, so you have the heartache of not going through as well. So what was it like to play in when the goals are going back and forth? Oh, this is, it was just incredible because uh, just, uh, you know, I think supporters in this game couldn't sit. Yeah. Sit. Because they must stand or just doing this or just doing this. <laughs> you, know you couldn't, you couldn't, it is was, uh, seats don't need it in this, uh, during this game. You don't need any seats because yeah. uh, so, uh, supporters just uh, stand and, just was so emotional. And I have something. Yes. I'll show you something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I still have the this ball that I got. That's amazing. Yeah, it is this goal, yes. Uh yeah, four goals. Wow. Is... From this time I didn't kick the this ball. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Keep that safe. Maybe if, maybe if I will play another very important game, I will take with me and give the referee. And we must play this game. <laughs> so you, you, you'll ball. make sure you score, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Four goalies, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. when, you, when you score to make it 5-3 at that moment, we're going through an aggregate 6-5. You must have thought at that moment, after this crazy, crazy match, that this is it, we're going through. Yes, was definitely. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was uh, feeling. Yes, it is my our day. You know what I mean. It's our day. Whether you have maybe few or maybe one day in your football life when you just in the heaven. You know what I mean. Just you mm -hmm. flying, playing, you flying. You just uh, you feeling in this time you can do anything because uh, I remember this goal. It was so different goals it was different angle, uh, different moment, you know what I mean? Just, just, um, I think I passed the ball to Andy Walker, I think, to mm -hmm. his score goal. Yeah, yeah. I have, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it was that. Uh... Why he didn't, why he didn't pass me the ball for fifth goal? <laughs> what? I still love to see today. You still think about it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't no. let it go. No, I mean, yeah. What was then that, that feeling like after the final whistle when we have just witnessed one of the most surreal games in history of Celtic Football Club, but we don't go through? I mean, for yourself, having scored four goals as a striker, you must feel a little bit happy, but at the same time feel so down about the result. Yeah, it is, was uh, um, a lot of emotion, good, good emotional, and the same, you, you just uh, you just feeling you cannot continue this this uh, this uh, road because you score for goals, you are winning the game, but you not go through. You will be not continue your European dream. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, it is. Uh, I remember the next day was so difficult because uh, I remember when we came for training. And when some of the um, some of the journalists asked me, and I, I, I just I just remember I just say what I can say. I, I, I'm not happy. I scored four, four goals, but I don't really want to speak about these four goals because uh, because uh, uh, I am the player who play with the team. No, I, it is not individual sport. What is um, we feel, we feel really like you achieve something, you're going to the mountain, 
and you just fell down, you just, uh, I don't know, just uh, somebody push you just and you, you fell down uh, and you have crash. In the, yeah, uh, it's difficult. I think it is this moment when, I think this moment when we, when we get, if we, if we, if we go through, I think will be different story with our team as well. Mm -hmm. I think we will be more successful. Um, more successful, and I think we will be more, more strong uh, if we in Scottish football and the same next year uh, in Europe as well. Yeah, it's still sometimes must be... you recognize is, sometimes recognize is the moment when you make step forward or you just step back, yeah. backwards. It still must be very special for you though that night because it's still a moment that Celtic fans hold so dearly and you're still remembered at this football club for that match. So it must still be nice when you look back to have that connection with the supporters because of that moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you know, it is this moment was a special moment, but uh, uh, I general, I can, I can only say very good things about the Celtic supporters because they try to support you when you are have bad moment or you have... Uh, if you if you're not in the uh, uh, fantastic uh, play level, a very good level, if you didn't play, they always support you. If important, if you if you if you give one hundred percent, if you try your the best. Okay, sometimes you you are uh, you are not um, good performance, but you try very hard. You know, and it is the most important. Uh, if you take the risk, if you not um, cheat. If you try to give one hundred percent, you know, I mean, this is. But if this was incredible because uh, I think, I think if you see in the in in the video, uh, our reaction from the players and from the stand, uh, how uh, how uh, behave, uh, how emotional were supporters, how they uh, react on this moment, it was just incredible. It was just like. Like uh, I don't know, it's like you feel like I could do like in final the the Champions League or something. It was just incredible, but but yes, yeah. What are you a little complaining? Uh, why I didn't score five goals? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll go with you until your last day on earth. That that you didn't get that fifth goal. It seems. <laughs> <laughs> Let's look again, though, at, go past that game now. And I mean, you're, you're at Celtic from 1989 to, to 1991. How do you reflect on your time as a whole at Celtic after that game for the next couple of years? Because it, it wasn't the most successful time for Celtic as a club in those few years. Yeah, we, we, we were not really good, uh, I think, organised. We uh, have the moment where it will be changed. And uh, because you always have competition between uh, Rangers and Celtic, and think Celtic uh, about the about the organization, about the um, about the vision, about what to, doing the best for this club was a little behind the uh, Celtic. Mm. Yeah, because you you see next on the nineties was a lot of changes is uh, in the in the in the club was uh, built new stadium. Uh, uh, come new people, came new people, and new vision, new new idea about the club. And after, where we very successful Celtic was, uh, yeah, I, I must say pity for me. I didn't, I didn't uh, play in this time when were when were uh, Celtic were very successful by one championship in. Uh, by winning the Scottish League and uh, we quite successful in the, in the in the Europe as well. Yeah, it still seems though like you have a lot of great memories from your time and played with some some really good players. What was the the dressing room like that you were involved in, and what players did you really enjoy playing with? Yeah, it was uh, is uh, in in the in the the changing room was. Uh, it's not quiet. It is, was quite, uh, uh, how I say, uh, personal. Uh, a lot of uh, 
a lot of uh, good personal uh, players uh, who have the who have the good sense of humor. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I know Derek White was uh, quite fun, and uh, and um, Chris Morris, uh, Chris Morris, uh, Tommy Barnes, Tommy Barnes uh, was quite serious, and who more? Uh, Yes, I was quite friendly with the with the Paul Elliott because we came uh, the same time. We stay uh, half year the same hotel in hospitality. Just now we have uh, this hospitality in his uh, has different uh, name. Just now this hotel we stay room by room together. And later we're living in Addington, and we, he has uh, one uh, house. I beside him I has, uh, have another uh, house. What we were friendly and uh, yeah, was we? I don't. I think we 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 will uh, quite well. We we uh, we been each other. We we don't have any problem. I think uh, in the changing room or, or uh, outside the the the, the club. Uh, sometimes I'm only with maybe Peter Grant. I have argued because he liked to speak during the pitch and after. The, First half or uh, after the game, I I ask you what you want from me, what you want from me, and sometimes if I understand, I just jump into him. I say, don't say to me again, please, because I, I am so. We say, you know, it is normal life in the in the changing room. Yeah, uh, yeah. Were you one of the big personalities in the changing room as well? Were you one of the the louder voices and one of the more energetic voices as well? Uh, no, no, really. No, really. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I am not. But I am not on, on, on. I wasn't on the leader in the changing room. Maybe outside. I am the person who uh, I like a sense of humor. I am the open guy. Uh, yeah, but sometimes I have. I have like Peter Grant with another players. Peter, I, I, I don't know why. <laughs> why I, <laughs> But uh, because I play uh, uh, many in the, my my uh, advantage to when I play was individual. Yes, I play more uh, a lot of individual. Individual. Yes, and uh, sometimes if I lose the ball, they say, "What are you doing? Why you didn't pass?" Yes, <laughs> and the same I have problems sometimes to uh, if I lose the ball, just playing defensive. I have little problem. And uh, sometimes the players they told me, Jackie, if you if we don't have the ball, we must uh, we must uh, fight for this ball. And we, we when we have uh, the ball, we just uh, have the time to rest because we have the ball. I said, hmm, maybe I have better idea. If we if we uh, don't have the ball, you run, you take the ball, pass me, and you, this time you take the rest because I have the ball. You don't need moving because I will be dribbling. I will be individual play. You have time for rest. <laughs> what is the what is basically no? You don't understand. You don't understand football. <laughs> <laughs> so you end up um, leaving Celtic in, in 1991. I think at that point, Billy McNeil had left and Lou McCary had come in as manager. What made you leave the club in the end? Was it just not getting as many minutes on the park? Yeah, this time. Uh, I was sure I will stay a longer time because I remember I bought it, uh, a new house. Uh, I'm moving from Huntingstone to Cambernault to be very close to Ballesteros Golf Course. And uh, I thought I will, I will sign contract for longer. And when Lion Brady came, we, I remember we went to Ireland, to Dublin. We played five games. And I play maybe 90 minutes, 80 minutes during five games is not a lot. And at the same time, uh, Celtic bought uh, Tony Cascarino. And uh, I think they spent one and a half million. And from this moment, uh, I, I think I wasn't in the, in the view, I wasn't in the, in the, in the mind, Lion Brady mind about the first team. And I remember after the first month, uh, first month when we start playing league games, I, I training with the first team, but I started playing in the reserve team. 
and uh, in the reserve team was Bobby Lennox. Bobby Lennox. Mm -hmm. And and what happened? For me, it was shocked. I was dropped to reserve team, and during first uh, one one and a half months, I was the worst player in the reserve team. Believe me, I couldn't play. I just I came to the uh, when was whistle from the before the whistle. I said, okay, I must show. I must show. I am good enough to 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 be. I am so. I am very good to play in reserve, but I deserve to play first team. But when whistle was from referee, I just I was just uh, argue with the young players. I argue with Bobby Lennox. It was incredible. It was a very bad time because my mind was just switch off. I don't know, just uh, just uh, psychological. I, I wasn't good enough. This kind of, I said, what are you doing? What are you doing? I couldn't. And after a few weeks, I started play, starting more training. And after one and a half, one, and Bobby Lennox was always have problem. What are you doing? Sometimes he dropped it me after the first half. And what are you doing? I said, what are you doing? And and I starting to say, I must doing something, concentrate something. And after one and a half months, when I starting the normal play, you know, in my normal uh, level, uh, I said, Bobby, you have any problem with me? I said, no, you play. What, what you want, you play. I don't say anything to you. After the game, sometimes I ask him, Bobby, if you, if you, if you have conversation with uh, Brian, uh, uh, Liam, um, uh, uh, Liam Brady, did you, call, did you tell to him who is the best in the reserve team? Uh, he said, yes, you and another uh, player. So uh, why you, he didn't take me to the first team? Wasn't, wasn't, wasn't for me um, exceptional, exceptional, you know, it is not exceptional. But uh, it is was good moment, for, good, a bad moment for me. And uh, and I wasn't happy, but I know, I think Jerry Granny, the best time this time, and starting playing Tommy Coyne, uh, Charlie Nicholas was this time, and uh, Tony Cascarino. And, and after a few months, I didn't get the chance to play. And uh, I was uh, so unhappy, but I moving from uh, from Celtic. What was was for me a uh, quite difficult moment. Yeah. Because be, because if you play for Celtic or a physical of club and uh, you play quite well, uh, you feel uh, friendly people around you. You don't want more. You just want to. Uh, if you if they give you a chance to prove it, you are good enough. This time I have uh, 29, 30 years old, but still I think I, I will allow to. Um, I, I can't to play good play football. I think another two three years. I think, but you know sometimes uh, it came to uh, new manager, new idea. Okay, you must uh, you must accept this. Yeah. Yeah. There's one other little bit of uh, your career that I'm quite interested to, to talk to you about because it has a Celtic connection to it. And that was when you were the assistant manager to Poland in 2006 and 2008. And you had two Celtic players in your team at that time in Magic Zaraski and Artur Boric. I'm just quite interested to know what they were like to, to work under, especially Artur, because he was, was such an important figure in Celtic during those years as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, it, it is true. Two thousand six, two thousand eight. Uh, Artur Boros and and uh, Maciej Żuravski was the captain uh, for for uh, for the uh, national team. Yeah, it's uh, it's Boros is a special special character. You know what I mean. Uh, he's uh, he's person maybe who is not leader, but uh, it is like volcano. It is like Volcan. He can exploit. You never know when. <laughs> it's good. It's coming from inside. Good uh, things or bad things. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. And uh, Maciej Żuravski, I, I spoke with him about the the the, the when he played for uh, Celtic, uh, and he said he uh, he, he tried to best, but uh, 
he didn't he he was uh, i think he told me he wasn't enough to concentrate to 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 handle to uh, to to how to say uh, handle the to manage to take responsibility for uh, for uh, take the pressure yeah. uh, every week uh, because it's quite difficult for Arthur Boris is no problem every day if he will play in the eyebrows and show something no problem he will do every day <laughs> <laughs> I think it's no that, I don't know what you think at that time but for me watching Arthur Boris during particularly those two years 2006 2007 and 2008 those three years do you think he was one of the, the best goalkeepers in Europe at that moment in time? Because he was performing in the Champions League for Celtic heroically and winning league titles as well. So where would you have ranked him amongst Europe's best at that moment? Yeah, I, found, I think he was uh, on the three of best goalkeeper in this time, I think. And Artus was a very important uh, player for us. And... Uh, yeah, he, he was a very good time he has, uh, and yeah, 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 it's, I agree, he was a uh, few years when he was on the, if you uh, say about him, he was the uh, first, second or third, depends, uh, uh, you, yes, he has big, uh, big uh, quality, and yeah, he was one of the best in this time. Yeah. Yes, in the, well, Jackie, before I let you go, what we do is, with every guest at the end is we do some quick fire questions. So I'll run through some of them and I just want you to, to give your answers. I think some of them we might know the answers to and when we get to them, you'll know why. Um, but first of all, I want to start off with what was your favourite goal for Celtic? Favourite goal? Yeah. Favourite goal I scored in the, in the uh, Hibernians against Hibernians in the away and I remember I scored goals from 30 35 meters and this was shot shot was was incredible uh, for me uh, it is uh, but you know it's uh, it's, uh, it's this crazy uh, what I what I scored uh, back by accident was the goal against Rangers first game <laughs> first uh, I play in Celtic because it is this goal you never will uh, remind you. You never say, "Oh, I scored this goal because I was so lucky." But you know, when you score a first game in, against uh, Rangers at home, it is like uh, like you score like the uh, by scissors. You know what I mean? Yeah, like scissors overhead. Yeah, yeah, so like, effect, yeah. Like, like overhead, you score goal from sixteen meters. <laughs> you know. <Like> Ibrahimovic. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Favorite game you played in for Celtic? Uh, favorite uh, when it was the best, I think, against Partizan Belgrade was. Yeah. Was four goals and uh, and uh, I passed the uh, I was players who passed the ball as well. Andy Walker it was, and this game it was. Uh, it's only only I regret I didn't score more. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what it would say what would you say is your favorite memory from being at Celtic? Now that can be something on the park or it could be something off the park as well. Uh, you know, I feel like a home in 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 uh, in uh, Glasgow. Uh, I think friendly people was incredible and uh, I I I I feel like um Mm. Uh, I was so happy. I have good. I have experience to to play in this club, and uh, yeah, it was it was great because you know you, when you came from Poland, when you a, a lot of problems you have. You you have a problem in addition for shopping. Uh, okay, you you are you are a little special if you are a, a national team player. If you play under communist country, if you play in a big club like Legia or so, but you still feel like it's not the same like you play like it's uh, in uh, West Europe. But, uh, but you know, this atmosphere, uh, this, uh, mm, this uh, passion, it is something special, believe me, believe me. It is something special. It is, it is, uh, it is only warm, warm, you get it, if you try, uh, 
you try uh, be try uh, your the best uh, to give the, the best what you have you know? yeah yeah i think this next That's question me. ties in nicely which is what is one thing you miss about glasgow what i miss yeah uh what I miss, uh, I think uh, I really regret I didn't achieve the champions of the Scotland. Uh, on, uh, this moment when you are happy, when you are, uh, when you are feel feel very good, you 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 do a very good job, and you just have big competitor uh, competition with the ranchers, and you you win. And I regret I didn't I didn't have the chance to to. To play longer, and uh, because I thought I will be playing another three years for uh, for Celtic. And finally, who was the best player you played alongside with at Celtic? Wow, tough one. No, it's you know, it's, uh, it was great play. It was Paul McStay. It was really great uh, midfield players. Uh, yeah, that's a good that's a good option. I think he was a, a great player for Celtic. Yeah, uh, I think few players for the same was great. Uh, like uh, I think big potential have Mike Galloway as well when he came. John Collins, mm -hmm. John Collins, a great player. Yeah. Uh, I must say, this time was quite important player. It was Paul Elliott uh, for Celtic, and, and uh, at the beginning he couldn't uh, he couldn't uh, uh, play with us. But later, when he when he you know, started to be healthy, uh, he he was a very good player. Paki Bonner was a great goalkeeper, and uh, yeah, yeah, lots of good uh, players. Yeah, lots of good players because you know if you Tommy Barnes, uh, if you if you say Roy Atkin, who, who we play half year or, or one year, and later later on he moved to Newcastle United. Yeah, who is more? Derek White, you know. Uh, Tommy Coyne was. Uh, Good uh, partner in on the on the up front, uh, Mr. Greedy and the Walker as well. <laughs> okay, and I think that's where we end it now. <laughs> but no, Jackie, um, thank you so much for taking out the time and going through all those memories. It's a, a real pleasure to get the chance to speak to you and showing off your memorabilia as well. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much, and I say uh, good luck for for uh, Celtic. Uh, 